Okay, the last problem we have for the first section of the homework for chapter 5 is E57. E57 asks us to analyze and interpret the asset turnover and net profit margin ratio, and it gives us some information about Papa John's. I've written for you the equations here for the asset turnover and the net profit margin ratio here. Remember that the average, or excuse me, the asset turnover ratio, it takes the average assets, divides them into revenue. Don't forget that this represents how well a company is using its assets to generate revenue, right? Um, we, we buy things in a company, in a business, in order to use them to generate revenue, and, and that's what the asset turnover ratio is trying to measure. Um, for the net profit margin ratio, again, we, we've had a problem on this in, the, in previous homework that we've had for the first section of, of chapter five, but again, and it's taking how, how many dollars of net income do we get based upon how many dollars of revenue that we make. Um, don't forget that this indicates how well a company controls its expenses. So if we plug in the information here, for asset turnover ratio, first thing we want is revenue. It gives us revenue for 2010 is 1, 1, 2, 6. And because revenue is the denominator here for the net profit margin ratio, I'm going to plug it in down here as well so we don't have to write it twice. The next thing that we want is average total assets. The total assets for 2010, the two, the beginning and end of the year, is 394 and 416. So if we take 394 plus 416 and divide it by two, we'll get the average total assets there. For 2009, I'll go ahead and plug that into. It's 386 and 394. and we'll divide it by two again. Don't forget, the end of the year assets here are the beginning of the year assets here. Don't forget the reason why we're doing average total assets, right? Revenue here is through a period, right? Remember the income statement is through a period, start to A to B, right? Uh, starting, ending, right? So average assets is used so that we get the denominator to also be through a period. The balance sheet is a snapshot, a point in time. The income statement is through a period. Since the numerator is through a period, we need the denominator to be through a period. If we just use one date, if we just use one point in time, this would only be as of a certain date. So we use average so that both um, items agree, both of their characteristics agree here. Um, let's get total revenue for 2009. It's 1079. And we'll drop that down here as well so that we don't have to write it again. The only thing we're missing is for net profit margin for uh, net income. Net income for 2010 was 52. And for 2009, it was 57. Okay. So if we go ahead and calculate all these out, for the 2010, we have get 2.78, I'm going to write this right here, 2.78, hopefully you can see that here. It's 2.78 for the average turnover, the asset turnover, and 2.77 for 2009. For the net profit margin, we get 4.61%. For 2010 and 5.28 for 2009. Okay, the second part of this uh, problem asks us. Would analysts be more likely to increase or decrease their estimates of the stock value on the basis of these ch changes? Explain by interpreting what the changes mean. Okay, so when we look at these changes from year to year, we see that the asset turnover ratio, it doesn't change too much, right? 2.78 in 2010, 2.77 in 2009, not much of a change. There's a modest increase in 2010, right? If we look at the net profit margin ratio, we see 4.61 in 2010, and 5.28 in 2009. This is a big swing. Remember that the net profit margin ratio indicates how well a company controls its expenses, right? Now, if you look at this, most likely since we can see that the assets here increase to 416 during 2010, right? They started at 394. They increased to 416. We know that part of this drop in income, because notice the income has dropped uh, from 57 to 52. 
We know that part of this drop has to be due to depreciation expense, right? As we use up the assets, we're going to record depreciation expense. Therefore, part of this drop has to be due to that. We notice that revenue has actually increased in 2010, and that makes sense because we use more assets now, right? Assets should generate us more revenue. But in overall, in, in respect to the relationship between expenses that we're actually controlling and then the revenue that we're earning, right? We're not cr controlling our expenses as well. Here we're showing a decrease in a percentage and it's actually a sizable decrease here from 2009 to 2010. So most likely analysts would say there's a, only a modest increase in the way that we're using our assets to generate revenue. We're only doing slightly, slightly better than what we did in 2009. However, we have a large decrease in our net profit margin, which means we're not controlling our expenses as well. And even though some of those expenses are due to the assets that we've increased, we're not using them efficiently enough in comparison to 2009 to 2010 to justify the decrease that we show here. Okay? And this is E57. If you have any questions, please let me know.